Um, does Ray have, I saved a final version of the presentation just uh, a few minutes ago. So does he have that final version? So Ray's not the one here tonight. It's, it's Parker. Parker. Yeah. Uh, I'll reload. So in the Dropbox thing, it's the presentation final. Um, I'll go ahead and start the presentation. I'll present it here and then we can switch it to Parker presenting once um, somebody there takes over. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, Eric's ready yeah. to go. Yep, yep, it's time. Uh, did you want to start and do the introduction? These, like a few introduction slides, Eric, or do you want me just to go ahead and get... I'll, I'll let you just start with it, Andrew, and then I'll, I'll take it over once we get done the video. All right. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen or if we need permission to do that. Just let me... Um, I guess before I start, I just would say I was hoping to be there in person, but I tested positive for COVID the other day, so that's why I'm presenting remotely. So, um, um, thank you everybody for joining us, and uh, yeah, we'll give a little presentation about um, why we're proposing these. Um, modifications to our buildings and um, what exactly we'd be looking to do. And then hopefully have some time for uh, questions and feedback from uh, you guys. And uh, and yeah, that's that's the plan. Let me. Andrew, the most up-to-date version I see is uh, updates from an hour ago. Does that sound about right? No, it should be sooner than that. Um, yeah, it should be presentation update 8-2024 final. That was just recently. Um, do you need permission to be able to present, Andrew? Maybe we'll just have you present it the whole time. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I'm a little just, worried that the the video might not come through as as well quality from my screen. You know, coming up. I uh, just found the right one. All right, Parker's on it. You got it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let me see if. <coughs> I guess I can just share my entire screen, maybe. Yeah, it looks like I do need to. No, it looks like. Looks perfect, Andrew. Okay. Now let me start at the beginning of the slideshow. You can skip these first few slides, Andrew. Okay. These are kind of our standard energy efficient slides. I'm Eric Lapia, Energy Efficient Investments. We've been working with the school district for the last few years looking at energy upgrades. Um, you can go, Andrew. Yeah. All right, so yeah, we've been working with EEI um, the last couple of years, and uh, part of that process is to do kind of a complete um, complete audit of our buildings to figure out everything that should be updated in them. And we divided the project into two phases. Um, the first one was all the upgrades that we could do that basically pay for themselves, that had energy savings. And so this included the Bethel boiler um, conversion from fuel oil to wood chips that happened last year. And we also did LED lighting upgrades across the two campuses, um, among other things. So that project was um, done and finished last year. So now we're looking at the pieces that were identified that don't have the associated energy savings to kind of pay for themselves that will actually need to come up with funding to pay for um, from us. So, um, to talk about what these things that have been identified that need to happen, um, one that absolutely has to happen is, um, a stormwater abatement, uh, project because the White River, uh, the South Royal campus gym, um, addition 
didn't provide adequate stormwater abatement. Um, this was discovered a couple of years ago, and we have until the end of um, next year to comply um, with those regulations. So that has to happen in the relatively near future. Um, in addition, um, when we're doing the audit of the buildings, um, the South Royal Campus Library and the high school science rooms don't have active ventilations. Um, and it's been shown through um, you know the pandemic just how important ventilation and fresh air is for keeping um, people healthy and, and avoiding sickness. So um, having these important rooms in our buildings without ventilation is something that we should definitely fix. Another aspect of our buildings that need to be addressed is that um, we have multiple entrances that do not meet um, Vermont's recommended school safety best practices standards. Um, these standards call for a double entrance, kind of vestibule entrance um, method where you would enter a first set of doors and have a second set of doors that's locked that the um, people, uh, staff member could see somebody in that vestibule area and then buzz them through the second set of doors. Um, currently the entrances at the Bethel Middle School and Elementary School and our um, high school side of the building um, in South Royalton don't meet these uh, school safety best practices standards. Um, in addition to that, our current high school entrance for the high school students um, and any elementary um, or any performances that happen in the elementary gym on our stage and any elementary gym events are coming through the door that's pictured here. And you can see that that's not a very um, attractive entrance and it does not show our school off to the best capacity. Um, and finally, there's no um, lobby associated with this entrance. You just enter and there's a hallway and that leads towards the gym area. Um, so when there's people that need to wait for performances or elementary gym events, it becomes very um, crowded and, and it's not ideal. Um, and finally, the high school entrance is not up to current fire code standards. Um, we need to be able to, those, those doors aren't rated to be able to handle the um, number of students that should be able to exit if there was the need for it. So, um, those are entrances or things that are should be addressed with our entrances. Um, finally, we have a number of a couple of programs that have really um, expanded our running into space constraints. Uh, one of the primary ones is our band and chorus um, programs, and there are currently uh, 55 students enrolled for next year for band and 20 students enrolled for chorus this year. That's about 30% um, of students that are currently actively engaged with the music program. Our current rehearsal space has very little acoustical treatment, um, leading to unsafe sound levels with rehearsals that regularly hit 110 decibels. Um, the WHO recommended um, safe listening levels for that amount of sound is is only two and a half minutes a week. So that doesn't seem like something that we should be having our students hearing on a regular basis. Um, uh, in addition to that, um, sharing space with the elementary programs makes for challenging scheduling and limits music department offerings. I know um, the elementary music program frequently has to do their programming in uh, the individual classroom instead of having the students come to a music space where they can um, do their music program. Um, practice space is a long way from where the performance space is and there's no ADA compliant stage access. Um, and you know our high school is one of the few high schools in the state of Vermont without an auditorium. And um, so they're doing performances in the elementary gymnasium in South Royalton, which really has substandard acoustics and does not show off our uh, talented performers um, the way that they deserve to um, be seen. Um, 
at this point, I think we'll show a video uh, that the music boosters and music department um, put together that really um, does a great job of, of showing the need for uh, improvements to this space. Um, I will play it here if it's if the quality is not great through the um, meet connection, why don't you tell me and we can play it locally instead. When I came back to Vermont, the local high schools, none of them had bands. I decided we had to have bands. So I did. I started bands in four of the towns in this area, South Groves and First, and then uh, Randolph and Bethel and Rochester. It started with Dick Ellis as a proponent of music. Uh, he taught in all of the schools in the district probably at that time, and he led the town band. And I saw at that time, even before my children were in school, that here was a community that embraced music. One, two, three, ready, in. To have like such a supportive music program has like helped a lot of people like gain access to be able to do what they want to do. I play the trombone. I'm in concert band, jazz band, chorus band, jazz band, normal band, and theater. Music has always been a big part of my life, and I've been in band and chorus for as long as it's been available. I've been going to concerts at South Royalton since probably 1979, 80, something like that. But as an audience member, it is really hard to keep things under control because there is so much noise reverberating in the room. If our students can have a space that has good acoustics and can understand for themselves what they are producing, that makes a better musician. When I go down to like the band room, like and I see like like the band class, like and I see how many kids there are in there, it's so like it's so like confined that but there's so many kids that want to join band. Our music program is growing and we just need a larger rehearsal space for these students. It's it's pretty chaotic to be honest. Um, so probably about ten percent of class is spent just setting up and breaking down. If, if the setup was there already, students didn't have to do that, that could be a lot more time that students could be accessing their education. We spend all these months like playing this music in the basement room, and the acoustics in there, it's like too much to be playing. Not to mention the fact that we have like damaging amounts of sound hitting our ears when we're trying to put hers down there. There is very little room to walk around. It's a <coughs> hazard if there's an emergency. Anybody can walk into the band rehearsal on any day that band is rehearsing and see that it is at max capacity. Performing Arts Center would be such a great addition, especially to our music department in general. Just, I mean, what we have to do now is, in order to get to a concert, we have to lug all of our instruments, all the percussion, all, everything up the stairs into the small gym, which is basically on the other side of the school than the current band room we're in. I don't think students feel like it's a space where they're being celebrated. I think it's a space that we are making do, but I don't think they are walking out and getting the musical experience that they deserve. 25 percent of our students are involved in the music program here at White River Valley High School. You know when they built the new gym years ago there was a lot of pride in our school and athletics and you know the gym came and like the saying is you build it they will come and I think it's true when we talk about pride in our school you know pride is a sense of belonging and I think it's important that everyone has that sense of belonging in our school providing the Performing Arts Center will be a chance for a lot of our students to have that sense of belonging and more pride in our school. There, there's a, um, a good buzz um, with the, the new Wildcat. It's a combination of two schools coming together as one. Um, and out of the gate, the, you know, academics has been a very large focus of that. Uh, we've most recently seen athletics be um, a big focus and now, and now the piece that we're looking 
um, at this point to complete that package is the, the performing arts piece of it. The kids with school choice, they they get to look around, they get to see which schools they want to come to. With a performing arts center, we're gonna our school's going to look a lot nicer, first of all, and already uh, the music department and the theater department such a massive draw. You know, we kicked around some numbers. If, if we just had eight to ten new students that came to our school every year that just wanted to participate in the performing arts piece, that that would pay a bond vote. When we're in a rehearsal and we've been working on something and something just comes together in a way that is really powerful, that they can feel it, I can feel it, there's there's the sense in the room that something just happened. Look what they can produce together. And that blended sound is the community of your singers, the community of your instrumentalists and band and orchestra, whatever it is. I want that for all students. That is my goal, is to make sure that there's music in everybody's life. And I think that the kids embrace that. Even though we're the ones like talking about this right now and we're we're here, I guarantee you if you go and ask anybody else who's part of these programs, part of the band or chorus or theater program, they're going to agree and they're going to say that how useful and helpful of a tool the PAC would be. I've always thought that uh, saying that success breeds success is quite true because uh, with that, we've somehow got a reputation of being a, a fairly good band. <laughs> Andrew, you want me to take it from here? No, I, I'll keep going on the next. Uh, I just needed to figure out how to not be playing the video. All right. Um, so that was a lot about the music program and um, the needs for that program. Another program that is entering, uh, hitting some space constraints is our tech ed program. Um, there are currently 48 students signed up for shop uh, a tech ed class this year. And the current shop and welding space really limits the number of students and size and scope of possible projects. So these pictures are pictures of the current shop area. And um, one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, if a student is trying to work on a piece of furniture or they're, you know, working on a car engine or whatever other project they're working on it, generally in order to do these projects, you need to have that material out for periods of time, which really makes it so that that space gets cluttered and filled up quickly. Um, the welding station is currently contained to a very tight corner um, near the overhead door, which only allows welding for one student at a time. And that's um, something that's, uh, there's a lot more demand than that can satisfy. And we'd expect this demand to, for these programs to continue to grow. You know, we have um, now have a great uh, makerspace in our middle school and an expanded tech ed program in our middle school. And as those students experience that programming in the middle school and come to our high school, uh, we're expecting further demand to increase for, for these programs. In addition, we have been expanding our flexible pathways programming and um, having these resources available to help with projects that students are doing. Um, that might not be kind of standard classroom learning, but really provide deep learning opportunities. Um, you know, we're again, we're expecting demand for the, these resources to increase. Um, not to mention that we're going to be starting to do um, capstone projects at the high school, which would also potentially be using these resources. Um, and one final. Um, thing that we're looking to address um, with our, our uh, high school is that the oil tank um, at the high school is nearing the end of life. Um, it also happens to be located right outside the tech area. So um, in order to expand that, um, we will be encroaching on the oil tank area. Um, oil heat is more expensive and inefficient than other options. So the number two heating fuel oil that is currently being used is, is basically becoming obsolete as a heating source. Um, the current boiler, though, has uh, 
at you know 10 years of useful life so it doesn't make economic sense to replace the whole boiler but um, looking to switch it to a different fuel um, does make sense so um, just to look at why we're looking at do the, doing these projects now I mean we've already talked about how this is kind of a continuation of a multi-year plan to address our facilities deficits but another major reason is that our enrollment is up um, so looking at the last five years, um, you know, we were right after the merger, we were around 190 students in our high school. And this year we're expecting 231 um, coming in. And in South Royalton, before the merger, the high school um, ADM, average daily membership, uh, peaked in 1998 at 208 students. So we have more students in our high school than we ever have you know, as a result of, of the merger, which is great and something that we want to continue. Um, the merger, by sending the middle school to Bethel, it enabled more classroom space for this larger number of um, high school students. But um, the programs that have dedicated space, like the music, music program, the tech ed space, those we can't really expand without expanding our building a little bit. So, um, that would be a good reason to do those um, projects. You know, why why we have a need for these projects where we didn't in the past. Um, and another reason why it'd be a good time to do it now is that uh, our gym bond will be expiring in um, 2029. And um, as that chunk of money that we've been paying to pay off the gym bond is phased out of our budget, um, the timing is about right so that if we approve these projects, the new bond would phase in and make it so that the overall amount that we're paying for bonds doesn't um, impact the tax rate much. Um, so just to look at what the solutions that we're proposing for um, the issues that we just talked about. Um, First would be a drainage swale and catch area to address the stormwater abatement needs of both the existing building and whatever new additions um, we decide on. Um, we'd be adding uh, heat pump dehumidification and ventilation for the library and science rooms to address the ventilation there. Um, there'd be new vestibule access for the Bethel Middle School and um, key access systems in both Bethel and Royalton. Of course, the primary um, Part of the project that we're um, really focusing on is the Performing Arts Center edition, which would um, increase the rehearsal space for the high school band and chorus from 1,059 square feet to 3,000 square feet. Um, and this would also provide a space that could be used for you know small performances. Um, it would have offices for the music department staff, uh, soundproof rehearsal rooms for student practicing and private lessons, really um, enhancing our, our uh, really unique private lesson program that we provide um, through our music department. There'd be a secure vestibule entrance on the high school side with upgraded lobby and additional restrooms and really that would enhance the aesthetics of entering the building from that side of the, um, the building. And finally, there'd be an ADA compliant access to the elementary st gym stage area. Um, it is important to note that the Performing Arts Center is not an auditorium. Um, I think adding an auditorium was going to be uh, not feasible given the space constraints and budgetary constraints that we were looking at. So um, we would still be using the elementary gym space for performances. But part of this um, proposal would be um, refreshing that elementary gym performance space with acoustic and lighting upgrades to make it a much more pleasant um, uh, performance space and enhance the uh, audience experience. Um, we'd be looking to expand the wood shop area to increase the space by 1,000 square feet. So going from 1,610 square feet to 2,610 square feet allowing for increased use and additional programming. And then there would be the energy uh, upgrades, which 
would include um, switching the current boiler from burning number two fuel oil or to oil to propane, replacing the end of life fuel oil tank. And then also uh, doing a control upgrade, retrofitting the current controls to increase efficiency and uh, the scheduling of, of heating in the building. All right, um, if you wanna take over at this point. I can... Hello everyone, Eric Lafayette. Um, I know Andrew's given the presentation. I'll run through some of the different measures and solutions. I know um, you guys do have a board meeting coming up. ECM number one is the actual performing arts center. This, like Andrew said, is a, a significant portion of the project. It also addresses the safety concerns with the front entryway. So what you're looking at on the screen up here is a new kind of formal entryway to the high school, uh, which would also be that student access from the existing high school to this new um, ensemble area or the new performing arts center that we're proposing. Um, the other nice thing about the project, it really formalizes that front entry lobby area that we were mentioning. Currently, it's a hallway. I think there's some offices where the current ADA lift is shown. Um, this actually creates kind of that, that performing arts feel. So you come in, there'll be a lobby. Um, we'd be looking at adding a couple bathrooms that would be easily accessible off of it as well. And then really most importantly, making sure that we have that wheelchair access to the stage so everybody can participate in these events. Um, so all that would be done right in the front area. Um, the nice thing about this project is this new Performing Arts Center really fits in nicely to this kind of like bus turnaround drop-off area that you have at the front of school. Um, so I really see limited impact to your guys' normal school operations. There is some demo that has to occur on some of the existing building. Um, and then we're finalizing some fire marshal egress walkthroughs in ways. But um, I think what you'll notice is um, really trying to address, like, like Andrew was saying, not only having the space available for kids to be able to practice, but also having that true performing arts space where people can feel like they're coming into a show in a venue. Um, next slide. Um, structural design. So really at this point we've gone through, we've done structural analysis, civil analysis. Our plan is to make this new addition essentially net zero. So we're providing no energy add by doing the new addition. Everything that we do is going to have energy efficiency of, uh, incorporated with it, as well as doing the retro commissioning on the existing school and the fuel switch. Um, so this kind of just shows you the outline of where this um, new addition would go. Um, if you go to the next slide, Andrew. Um, we'd have to rework, here's your new kind of formal entry into the high school. Um, that's that existing drive that goes back towards the tech center that you guys, or the tech shop that you had mentioned before. Um, but really, you know, like we mentioned before, creating that catch area, having the space where the students can access the performing arts center, but not actually leaving the school grounds or the, the secured spot of the actual school, um, while creating that nice formal inviting entrance to the high school. Next slide. Um, same thing, so this is your main street view, okay? So now this kind of gets rid of this kind of big uh, mass of brick that you guys have now with some existing columns um, and some older boarded up kind of windows that are up top. Um, really brings a lot of kind of light back into the space and same thing, having a few different dimensions and roof lines to bring kind of not having that big mass feeling to it, but some break up to the actual architecture. Next slide. Library and science, heat pump ventilation, this is really important. These are two, um, this is a space in the school that's very underventilated and the fact that you guys have really no outside air coming into it. And these are high gathering spaces and locations where you have large groups of people. So this is, these are really, and then science rooms just being that they utilize a lot of different chemicals and processes as they're doing their things. It's really important to make sure that you have the right air changeovers and ventilation in those spaces. Um, not to mention adding dehumidification, which is going to really feel like cooling in those spaces, but not, you know, essentially controlling it to a temperature, but really controlling it to a relative humidity. So providing a space at the high school as a cooling spot where people can go in the summer for summer programs, meeting spots for school board meetings that is properly ventilated and air conditioned so people can learn comfort, hopefully. Next slide. Secured entrances, this is definitely something that has been a high priority for the school and something that we've been actually applying for grants on behalf of the school, trying to come up with some funds for this because it is something that um, both federal and state typically has a lot of money to help improve. Um, Bethel and Royalton do not have secured entrances at the middle school and high school. 
um, meaning like Andrew was mentioning, kind of creating that catch area, the double set of doors for people to walk through, actually have a face to be able to talk through to, through a window, your front administrator here at Bethel, um, the doors close behind them, they approve the people coming in, and then they enter the school. So it's creating that formal catch area, having the proper security, and then actually providing the programming and the keys and the teaching to the occupants of the school to utilize it in the right way. So not only going to school, but how do you access the playground? How do you leave the school at the end of the day? Um, how do kids enter? So it's really addressing all of those through air phone systems, key fob systems, and then creating these catch areas at both schools. Stage upgrades, this is something that's been bounced around a lot because I know how important it is when you guys practice this whole time um, and then you guys finally get to the performance, you get to show it to the, to the community and then you go to this gym that just isn't acoustically set up for the type of performances you guys are putting on. So here we're looking at a mix of lighting and audio upgrades. So actually the, the stage lighting, the sound system that um, you know the speakers are picking up when people are doing a drama performance. Um, building automation controls is going to be huge in here. So making sure that we provide the right ventilation and demand control ventilation. We all have been to those performances in the middle of the winter and it's like negative five degrees outside and there's 400 people in the gym and somehow it's like 90 in there and everyone's like, how is this even possible? So we will put the controls in place to fix that. So there is the ventilation that matches the need for the space. Next slide. Storm water improvements, as Andrew was mentioning, these are state required upgrades that they have put into effect quite some time ago. I want to say like seven or eight years ago. Another thing where the goalpost kind of moves in these requirements, but the need is definitely there. Um, this would be adding a drainage swell, and what's not shown on this is actually a retention holder um, storage tank that would be required with the addition of the Performing Arts Center. Um, so it's essentially creating kind of that natural area for the water to dissipate, which would be just south of, or just east of your guys' existing parking lot right now. Uh, and then the additions to the wood shops, I think these pictures are a little bit misleading because it's very well put together and organized. Um, but what you see here is essentially a wood shop that isn't a whole lot bigger than like a two car garage in a residential home. Um, and really limits the ability for people and for the shop teacher to have those larger projects like Andrew was mentioning, whether they're building a bed or they're working on a car, you put a car into one of those spaces and you might be able to fit like four people around it while not actually working, which isn't conducive to the type of stuff they want to do in there. This project would build an addition off of the front of the existing shop, so the two shop doors that are there now would get extended out. And then we'd be looking at putting a roughly a thousand square foot addition that comes out just about to the front of the existing fuel oil tank is now. Um, not looking at doing anything super fancy with the addition, obviously providing the power requirements, the ventilation requirements that they need to actually provide the welding um, in the type of maker space that they want to utilize it for. Um, but this is really providing instructional space and space for kids to be able to actually work on their STEM projects that they've been developing through the year. Next slide. Retro commission of the controls. So I think this is something that's really, I think, exciting and a huge opportunity for the schools. And it goes along with your guys' propane system and your fuel oil system. You guys have made tremendous strides in upgrading the ventilation, the HVAC system. This project kind of pulls those, all those things together. It kind of addresses this last piece, which is that the building still operates off of fuel oil, a tank that's 30 years old at past or at the end of its life. Also, with these major reconstruction to that kind of south side of your guys high school with the storm water that we're doing to the parking lot it really makes sense to think about what's that next fuel source for the school um, a lot of times we've been switching people over to propane just because the price per therm is has for the last three four years has 30 percent cheaper than fuel oil and on top of it it burns much cleaner so typically doing an oil to an lp fuel switch you're reducing your carbon emissions by 30 percent and then in the future, when these boilers do come to end of life, it's going to allow you guys to go with high efficient boilers. Um, fuel oil, condensing boilers, max efficiency is usually around 78%. With these new condensing high efficient boilers, they're over 90%. So there's, there's just savings in the aspect of how efficient the equipment, clean burning, they can be. Um, and then really, like I said, so we'd be looking at adding propane tanks. Um, somewhere in between the ball field and your guys' existing mechanical room. 
Um, and it really makes sense to address this because of the amount we cannot build that new addition on the tech shop where that fuel oil tank is. Um, and then really it is at end of life. Um, and we are making major adjustments to that whole south side of the high school. And that is where that fuel tank is. So kind of coming up with not only this project, right, for what we kind of address in these next few years, but thinking what's gonna happen 10 years from now when those existing boilers fail, what's the next fuel source, how will these buildings be heated and cooled into the future? So, next slide. Um, we're looking at a total project budget of um, right around six and a half million with some design contingency, um, bringing the total project cost of 6.7 million. Um, a chunk of that being the $4 million Performing Arts Center um, obviously, we have, we have costs associated with the HVAC and heat pump system, um, and then we'd be picking up um, savings efficiencies from the fuel switch, control improvements, dialing in the ventilation, um, and then we'd be looking at getting some rebates as well with um, Efficiency Vermont. Um, we have no grant shown right now. We've been applying for grants. Um, we haven't heard on them yet. We will continue to apply through the next year. Next slide. Um, yeah, I can take over at this point. So um, we have, so the different sources of funding for these projects would be, um, one would be fundraising. So the Music Boosters have been doing a great job of fundraising and have over $500,000 in pledge donations already. And hopefully um, we'll continue to improve that number. Um, again, as he was saying, there's different grants that, um, some have been applied for already and others that are uh, we may look to apply for in the future that would helpful, hopefully help with some of this. Um, we have about $2.1 million in our capital improvement fund. Um, we don't want to use all of that because, you know, we want to keep some of that in, in the fund to deal with unexpected building expenses um, so that uh, that may happen in the future. But uh, we can certainly use some of that capital improvement funds for this project. And whatever remains after those other funding sources, um, we would need to raise as a bond, um, which would be a 20-year bond taken out by the school district. Now, in order to do a bond, um, one thing to keep in mind once we get to talking about the overall bond number is that you have to bond for the total amount of the project, even if you have some other funding sources or are using capital improvement funds. So we, we're going to be discussing um, later on today at the board meeting how we would want to structure the, a bond or um, you know what, what of these, how, how we want to fund this. So um, exactly what it'll look like is still uh, a little up in the air. Um, so the next steps. Uh, the board meeting tonight, we're going to be discussing the project scope. If we want to do all of those separate pieces or um, and looking at a potential funding mix for how we want to like what what a bond might look like and how we might want to fund it. Um, between now and early September, we'd be looking to continue to gather community feedback and continue fundraising so that on September 10th, we can um, we're going to be looking to have a special board meeting to finalize um, what we want to request for a bond. Um, at our next board meeting on September 17th, we would approve the final bond warning, um, which would then go towards the voters um, for November uh, 4th. So, um, Eric, do you want to talk about the project development schedule here? Absolutely. Yeah, so at this point, um, we're at this informational meeting. We did have one about a month ago. Um, like Andrew had mentioned, the, the goal at this point or the, the schedule that we put forth um, is this hitting this September 17th as a warrant article motion for the school board. Um, and then really between September and November is get the information out to the voters. So it's not easy getting information out to people. We help people by um, um, creating mailers that are attractive to people that hopefully people will look at, providing these informational meetings, and then obviously the video that was already produced by your guys performing arts center. But <coughs> a lot of information to get out to people, it's not easy to get it. So that's something that, you know, hopefully I can help with either 
a, a task force that's or some kind of group that's going to be backing this project really with the goal of hitting and passing this vote for the November 4th vote, um, which is your general election. Um, there is a law in the state that requires a month for bond uh, repeal, so we'd be able to sign a contract um, or at least a letter or notice to proceed in early December. Um, we need to finalize all of our bid packages and drawing sets, um, so that would be taking uh, place through early February, we'd be working with the district to try to finalize schedules and bid packages that are most advantageous to you guys, as well as gets the best pricing for the subs at the end of the day, which is always huge. But the idea that we'd be breaking ground on the project spring, summer of 2025, um, really have the Performing Arts Center up and running for the school year for um, essentially uh, summer 2026 at that point. Um, and then summer 2026, we come in and we address any of the other, uh, we do the pro propane fuel switch at that point, probably complete the, the tech center addition, um, and then um, the, the rest of the other improvements would most likely happen this coming summer. Um, and then really have the whole project wrapped up by fall of 2026 and have it completed out. So we'd be looking at about 16 to 18 months from start to finish, from when we broke ground at the Performing Arts Center to when we completed all the work around the district. All right, so that's the end of uh, our presentation. So at this point, we'd be um, encourage any questions or feedback uh, that you have. So let me get back to the meeting. There we go. Um, would somebody who's there manage questions, I guess? Yep, we can do that, Andrew. Just raise your hand and we can call on you. Questions or comments? <laughs> Quiet group. Is that a question? No. Yeah. Jamie, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, just one thing I haven't heard. Uh, just curious, you know, so once the music program, if it does move into the new space, what happens with the old space? Because if we're talking about adding on the shop, um, you know, so what happens with that current space? Just trying to think about how that that's also being pitched to be used for other things. Yeah, so um, do you want me to answer this, Andrew, what we had discussed at the task force? Or? Sure. Um, so there's still a need for um, general elementary music space, because right now we've been doing classes in classrooms, pushing in. So it could still be utilized for that. And there are there is some office space there where we're continuing to try to add social-emotional supports through contracted service providers like Claire Martin Center. Uh, to provide therapeutic support and right now we still struggle with private spaces to be able to do those types of interventions so there's certainly office space in there that we could utilize to support our kids that way too so i don't i, I see us filling that space quite quickly with additional needs um, both at the elementary level but from student support perspective Well, um, if there aren't any other questions or comments at this point, um, I would say feel free, like we definitely would like to hear back from the community on this. You know, this isn't a project that we're trying to just like say, we have to do this and here's what's happening. We wanna hear back from from everybody out there about, you know, what your thoughts are and, and what, um, what any questions or, or feedback that you have. So, you know, feel free to contact uh, me or Jamie or any of the other board members or um, members of the music department um, if you have questions or uh, comments. So I encourage anybody to do that. Um, but otherwise, uh, unless there's anything else um, on this subject, we'll call this meeting to a close and open our 
board meeting, regularly scheduled board meeting. Motion. All right. I'll motion to adjourn this. Second. Second.